What's going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. So today, data download on JP introduced some pretty interesting stuff. Not only did we get information on a brand new super evolution that's about to drop, uh, but they also uh, was some data download for um, the anniversary ship has been put into the game. So we do know that, you know, anniversary stuff is about to kick into gear next week sometime. We are going to get full confirmation on the campaign coming up. Most likely sometime next week, we are going to know what the anniversary legend is going to be i cannot wait to know what it is cannot wait to see the data download to see what the character is and how strong they're going to be it's probably going to be at least over a week until we see the full details of the characters but we're probably going to see a hint towards the sixth anniversary legend sometime next week i'm looking forward to it so much and of course once that news does drop i'll be bringing you guys a video detailing everything about it because i'm just excited as you guys for the sixth anniversary on jp i cannot wait to see what the actual anniversary is going to be themed around what it's going to be who are the characters is we just don't know yet but anyways um speaking of the news today uh, a new super evolution is coming very very excited this is a character that is longly longly been anticipated to be getting a super evolution and we finally have it and that character is going to be fujitora version one uh version two got his super evolution a long long time ago kind of weird considering this character when did he come out 2016 on japan maybe 20 yeah i think around 2016 2016, maybe 2015 on Japan. I don't even remember. Either way, uh, this guy is like four years old. Probably four. Yeah, about four years old, I would say. So he was definitely in need of a super evolution. Kind of funny thing was, is that this character actually did see play. Whenever you'd be on a Kizuna clash and you could run those zombie-based teams with Brook and Magellan as your captains, this guy was always a really good character to have on those teams because you could use his special ability, and yes, it is a health cut, but you get continuous health cut for the next three turns. That was his previous version. This time, this character got a massive change. Well, I wouldn't say it's a massive change. I would just say it's a massive buff, honestly. This character got very, very strong. So, of course, this is on the Japanese version of the game. This is uh, not in English, but I do have translations here on the side. I translated them myself, so I do believe these are correct translations. If they are incorrect, I'll leave uh, any sort of message down below in the comment section, but I'm pretty sure that this is exactly what it is going to be. So, first of all, stats looking pretty solid across the board. This is max limit break. Um, with candies, he's going to have 5,687, 2,085 attack. Um, does he have a limit break expansion? I don't know if he has one yet um either way he does have obviously pvp stats he's a health cutter in pvp by 59 percent uh and he it looks like a level 8 boost of some kind to likely the driven class either way the pvp is not really what we're going to be talking about today we're not really going to be talking about characters pvp stats unless if they're legitimately broken or when it comes to global because a lot of people who are watching this video might not really play pvp yet or they don't really care at the moment but either way let's talk about his actual abilities and stats so first of all he still maintains the int class or the int color and he still is a driven powerhouse those did not change his previous version was still int driven powerhouse his captain ability did get a pretty nice buff so his captain ability will go ahead and boost driven characters attack by four times if they have a matching slot 3.25 times otherwise so that is already a massive change we'll continue on and we'll talk about it in, in more detail in a second but he also gives your driven characters a 1.5 times health boost and makes their recovery in tandem slots have matching slot effects that is all essentially the same just with some increases to attack multipliers however he does have an added effect where it says he launches his own special at the start of the quest now remember this only works if he is the captain very similar to legend kaido um, where he launches his special at the start of the quest um, he has to be the captain in order to do that as a sub that does not happen um, so either way looking at it at a standpoint of just the multipliers themselves previously he was a three times captain with a matching slot and i believe it was one point five times otherwise so he was absolutely horrendous he was extremely bad i mean looking at it to today's standards upon release he was probably the best legend in the game but obviously right now not so good but with this upgrade 3.25 times based most of the time but then you get four times with the matching slot and because he's making recovery in tandem beneficial more matching slots is always good and there are plenty of driven characters that have sailor abilities that can make certain colored orbs count as beneficial i mean look at the v2 dofi batch back in the day those guys have those sailor abilities some of those characters are still pretty good to this day and they they're, they're going to be used on characters like this with, with this type of team right um now the other good driven characters in the game that you would typically see as a 
captain are like v2 doflamingo to an extent and like bato and cavendish technically v1 judge with his super evolution is a pretty decent driven captain as well uh, he does have a pretty heavy restriction of having to have one of every color on his team though so it is a little bit of restriction there but Typically, if you look at just regular driven teams, most people are going to be using Bartu and Cavendish if, if, you, if you would have a choice of a driven captain. This guy's another good option, though. I, I would say that considering what his captain ability does, I think that this is a pretty solid option for selecting him as a captain on a driven team. Now, we haven't gone through his special ability yet. His special ability did get a pretty nice change, and I, 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 think, I think a lot of people are going to love it. Um, he actually is boosted for something. Uh, two times and then 15 turns cooldown. Oh, right, because there is a new Kizuna Clash that's coming to JP as well. It's a Kizuna Clash of, uh, who is it? Sulong Carrot. So this guy's likely going to be boosted for that Kizuna mode, if I had to guess. Either way, um, let's talk about his special ability. So 14 turn cooldown is pretty good for what he does, honestly. Um, so we'll go ahead. It's, it's a pretty low, like pretty small special. Like it really is not that extensive and it's pretty easy to understand. So first of all, reduces all enemies HP by 20% stock standard he will also change your crew's type slots into matching now remember with his captain ability he makes recovery and tandem beneficial so changing type slots is great so if you're using him as a captain and if you don't have block orbs g orbs bomb orbs whatever um you're basically going to be getting a guaranteed full board of orbs and then he states at the end of each turn reduce all enemies hp by 20 percent so what we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is basically like Kaido. He is basically Kaido to an extent, um, but it always happens at the end of the turn. So if you guys remember with Kaido, every time you enter a new stage, he would cut their HP by 20%. And then at the end of each turn, he does like 400 times his attack. This is slightly different because he doesn't do anything upon entering a stage, but he just says at the end of every turn, you cut their health by 20%. This is still very good though, because it means you do not need to bring a unit on your team to remove resilience, because this can count as a resilience remover. When you get someone down to 1 HP, um, and you have an end of turn damage buff, that end of turn damage does pierce through the resilience and will kill the enemy, so that's very good. Um, but overall, just having the innate ability to always remove enemies HP by 20% no matter what is so good. Now, this will count as a 99 turn buff, so it does mean that if the enemy removes your beneficial effects, this will disable this. And and obviously you can relaunch it again just by activating his special ability but again this is going to be interesting for kizuna clash because if you can have him set as your captain and literally every single turn no matter what you can just continuously reduce enemies hp by 20 percent i wonder what kind of teams are going to be built with this guy now very very intriguing um a lot of people were predicting once we did get the information prior to this data download that yeah he was going to be coming with his super evolution a lot of people were trying to spitball ideas as to what he was going to be doing, whether he was going to be boosting Driven Class still, was he still going to be boosting perhaps Powerhouse instead, or maybe like his version 2 counterpart potentially uh, boosting Slashes instead. All of those would have been fantastic options, but to be honest, I think this is a pretty fair, fair bet for what this guy is meant to be doing. And I like the fact that the most recent Super Evolutions that have been arriving on JP have been honestly very, very good. I mean, look at Legend Marco that came out not long ago. Quick Whitebeard is still really good. He came out on JP recently. Um, then you've got characters like Legend Lucy getting his Super Evolution. A lot of the recent Super Evolve units are like freaking amazing. And I love that they're doing that. I wish that they could go back to some of those older Super Evolutions and give them buffs that they strongly deserve. Because some of those older Super Evolution characters are honestly pretty terrible. I mean, look at V1 Whitebeard, V1 Boa. So characters like that do need better buffs. And... Unfortunately, as it is, we're going to get these new Super Evolutions now that, are, that, that, de that deserve the Super Evolutions now, and they are getting amazing buffs. There's still characters, though, that we would like to see get Super Evolutions, namely Log Luffy and Blackbeard. I think a lot of people would love to see those characters get Super Evolutions, and especially because it is the anniversary period on JP, a lot of people were predicting Log Luffy was going to get a Super Evolution, but... Again, it looks like we might have to wait a little bit for that. So let me know down below in the comment section, you know, what other characters are you excited to see for a Super Evolution? And as for Fujitora, what do you guys think about this guy? Because honestly, I think he's one of my favorite Super Evolutions in the game. They did a fantastic job with this guy, basically taking what he already does, but brought it into the 2020 meta, giving him amazing multipliers, easily accessible multipliers, that is, you know, four times with a matching slot. That's pretty easy to do. And then giving him a special ability that can proc at the start of the fight and you continuously can cut HP by 20% all the time. This is what we like to see in 2020. So whoever designed this guy in the Bandai team, 
props to them because I think they did a fantastic job. I'm really excited to see what other Super Evolutions are going to be coming in the future, especially for characters like Log Luffy, who we hope get a Super Evolution, and potentially Blackbeard, and there's plenty of others. Like, V2 Rayleigh is one that I would love to see get a Super Evolution as well. So that is going to uh, end this video, guys. I uh, really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know down below in the comment section, as I said, what do you guys think about the new Fujitora? Um, and if you guys enjoyed it, make sure you go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I will see you guys within the next video.